The problem with the practice of building a second brain is that it comes with the connotation that the second brain is going to be a replica of the first. But our first brains are already not good at everything. They might be good at making intuitive leaps, but they're pretty terrible at things like data storage and retrieval. So what if we made a database instead of a replica? That way, our first brains would be free to make connections, unhindered by the necessity of also storing and retrieving data that we may not even need every day. In this video, I'm going to talk about the Obsidian Data View plugin, how to use it, and why it's essential for building a bottom-up approach to note-taking and learning. What is DataView? DataView is an Obsidian community plugin that turns all of your notes in Obsidian, your entire vault, into a database. I go a little bit into the philosophy behind DataView in this video about Notion versus Obsidian, so check that out if you want a refresher. The thing to note about DataView is it can quickly get complicated and very daunting, so before you jump in and decide to completely reorganize your notes based on DataView metadata, just remember that it only needs to be as complicated as you want it to be. Here's how to install DataView. This is my test vault here. You just have to click on settings, turn off safe mode if you haven't already, click browse on community plugins, and then go ahead and type DataView. And when you click on it, click install, and it'll install it. You'll see this note here that says successfully installed DataView, and then go ahead and enable it as well. There are two steps to using data view. The first is annotating your notes, and the second is querying those notes. Annotating just means describing a note with fields that you specify. So let's just dive into a use case here, and let's go into the page for a person, Kieran. Now I've got this page for Kieran here, and there are two ways that I can start to annotate it. First, I can put it in the note here. So I could say, for example, that I want to say that the type of note this is, is a person. I could also say something like location, and let's say that's Singapore. The advantage of using this method of double colons is that it's right there in the body of the note, but there might be times when maybe you have a lot of things here that you don't really want to see normally. So in that case, what you could do is hide it behind this YAML front matter syntax. So that's just three dashes, and then you close it with three dashes again. And then within that, you put the parameters. So maybe I could say something like date met, and I'll say it was today. I could also add extra tags. I know that Kieran plays D&D, so maybe I'll tag it with D&D. Maybe he's a work colleague and I know that he's assigned to Project X, so I could add project as a parameter as well. The advantage of annotating a note in this way is that when we go over to the preview mode, those parameters aren't going to show up in the note itself. So we can only see the type and location here and not the tags and such that we added for Kieran. It's really personal preference. They're going to be treated in exactly the same way. So it's up to you. Now onto the second part, which is actually querying that data. You can think of a data view query as a more powerful search. A query always begins and ends with three backticks. This is what's known as a code block. Next, just after the first set of backticks, you can type the kind of code you're going to use in this block. For data view, it's going to be either data view or data view JS. Data view refers to the data view query language or DQL, and that's what I'd recommend you start with. The rest of the data view code block will consist of the query itself. A query begins with the type of view you want. Right now, data view supports lists, tables, tasks, and calendars. After that, you can put in the parameters that you want displayed, which is what's to the left of the colons in the data annotation example, like project or tags. Then you may want to specify where data view should look for the results. You can add a folder like from meetings, or you can instruct it to look for only notes with a certain tag, like from hashtag meeting. Which one you use is up to you and how you've chosen to structure your data. For simple queries, you can leave it at that, but you'll probably need to narrow down your query in some way so that you don't get too many results returned. For that, use the where keyword to denote criteria. What do you use as criteria? 
parameters, mostly those that you define while annotating the data. An optional part of the query is sort, which you can add if you want to specify the order in which the results should be displayed. Most of the time, though, you'll probably need sort file.name ASC or ascending, which will sort results alphabetically. So let's create a node for project X. So I just opened it up on the side here and I'll go ahead and title that. Now let's say I want a list of all the people that are assigned to project X. Then we can create a data view query. To do that, type out three backticks and then we'll put data view in there. Now let's say I want a list, so I'm going to type out list and maybe in addition to Kieran's page, I also want to specify the location. So that's this parameter here. So the problem is that if I exit out of that by just moving the cursor away from it, it's actually bringing up every single note that I've got. And that's because I didn't really specify any criteria for what I'm searching for. I just said list everything and the location of that thing. So I'm going to attempt to specify by adding a where clause. So I'll say where the type is person. And if I exit out of that, you'll see that there are two results now that are coming up. There's one for Kieran and one for Alice. Apparently, like if I bring Alice up, I already have this type person here. And you can see that with the Kieran note, I have it listed here in the body of the note. And on the Alice note, I have it listed in the front matter. But wait, Alice isn't working on Project X, so we really need to specify this query further. So I'm going to add and project equals project X. Let's try that. Now we're talking. Now it's only Kieran that's going to be shown in the results list. So I'll go back into that data view query and I'm going to copy that. But instead of list, I now want a table. And now that's showing the same results, Kieran, but there are now two columns, file and location. Now if we want this location to maybe be a country, but we don't really want to go back and change this location tag here, what we can do is add table location as country. And that's kind of like an alias. So it's still the location parameter, but instead we're calling it in this view country. The cool thing about data view is that it is dynamically generated. So if we go back to that Alice page and I decide that she's now been assigned to project X as well, I can just add project project X and that data view table is going to be updated. So what if we have a meeting about Project X? Well, I would probably create a sort of meetings folder and then I'd say introductory meeting for Project X. And I will also copy that as the title. And let's say we have meeting notes here. And then let's add some parameters. And I'll add instead of person this time, I'll type meeting and the project will be project X. But then maybe I also want to add the attendees. I'll add something here that says attendees, Kieran, and also maybe Alice. Another thing that I like to do for meetings is add a bit of a summary. So at the end of the meeting, I kind of write down any decisions. That way I can bring it up really quickly later. So I'll say Alice and Kieran are going to be working on project X. Let's say that's the decision. In the Project X page here, I can add another section called meetings. And we're going to do a data view query based on those meetings. So I'll add data view here. I want another table. This time, maybe I want the date actually. We haven't added the date yet. So let's do that now. So date, I'll say it was today. Go back into the meeting here and I'll say I want the date and summary. And then for the where clause, I'm going to say where project equals project X. So now there's a nice table here, but look, we're seeing the meeting, but we're also seeing Alice and Kieran. Those aren't meetings, those are people. That's because I only specified that the field is going to be project X, right? So two ways that I could do this. One is I could add another class here that says and type equals meeting and that should work and only bring up that one meeting. The other way that I can do it though is because I created this in a meetings folder, I could add from meetings. 
that's the name of the folder that I put that meeting note in. And it's going to have the same effect. Now it's going to have the date and the summary. So imagine that the more meetings I have, the more meetings are going to appear in this data view results as well. Another thing you can do with data view is start to build up like a glossary of sorts. Let's say I'm building a performance testing glossary. So I could have a note like this, but I need things to go in it. So I guess first I should make a note on performance testing. And in the body of the note itself, I'm going to say definition. And then I could also have tags here. So I could put glossary performance. Now in the performance testing glossary page, I could have, you guessed it, a data view query with a table and I'll have the name of the, I'll have the term, which is going to be the page and also the definition as definition. But I don't just want everything. I want notes where the tags include glossary. So now I've got performance testing and the definition here. And if you want to specify that it's going to be just about performance, you could have where it contains tags performance. And then if I remove this performance tag here, it should disappear from this glossary as well. Let's look at something from Readwise. Readwise is a service that I use for automatically bringing in my highlights from books, from Kindle books that I read into Obsidian. So you can see these are things that I highlighted while I was reading it on my Kindle or on the Kindle app as well. And, and it's also already got some tags that I've specified. Now, what if I want to have a list of all the books that I read in 2022 or reread in this case, I could create a page called books I read in 2022 and open that up here. And I'll add that as the title. This is kind of like if you were trying to set up your own version of Goodreads, one that's completely in your Obsidian vault and always accessible. So then I would probably create a table for this. We'll say I want the rating as rating and I don't want it to list everything in case I've also rated, you know, TV shows or something. So I'm going to type hashtag books. So I'm going to put where the date is greater than or equal to the date of 2022-01-01. So that's January 1st. So there's going to be a bunch of things here. You know what, let's add date in here so we can see instead of rating. And if we want to do instead of by instead of sorting by date, we could do it by title as well to look for Dune in there. And there's Dune March 27th, 2022. Following on that though, let's say that I had some tasks in that meeting. So I'm going to add a checkbox here. So maybe one of the action items in this meeting is talk to Rob about the intended deadline for this project. So then maybe I'll have a section in the project X node called tasks. And this is the third type. So we've already gone over list and table. And this is the third type, which is tasks. I'll still go ahead and do data view here and I'll add task. So I could just leave it as task with a space and let's see what that brings back. Looks like we had other tasks elsewhere in the vault. There was this one about product X that happened earlier on in the week. There's another one from my daily note where I needed to buy spaghetti and there's this task from this meeting, but this is the project X note, right? So we don't want everything. So we will just say, where project equals project X and not completed. Because if we tick off at one of those tasks, then we don't really need to chase that up, right? So let's see. Okay, now we're only seeing the one for project X. Let's see if we tick this one, that should disappear from the data view query and there it is. And if you untick that, it should show up again. Another thing you could do is instead of table, we could use a calendar as well. Now that's the fourth type we've done lists, tables, tasks, and now we're doing calendar. So one thing that we could use is file dot M time. That's the modified time of a file. So if I get out of that, it's going to show a calendar of notes that were changed when. So you can see this is where I imported all of those readwise books 
looks like I wrote some things uh, last week and today as well. Those are all the things that I changed, see? But if we're just looking at books, we're going to need to do from books again. The thing is that I imported all of my Readwise notes into this test vault, but normally when Readwise is running, it's going to be automatically importing those books when I read them. So it would be more spread out than this. Building a second brain isn't terribly useful if it has the same issues in retrieval and storage of data that the first one has. When we take a bottom-up approach to note-taking, we're taking notes without categorizing them or thinking about what their purpose might be in the future. But the problem with that is that we end up with a lot of notes and we're in the Evernote trap of just hoarding data rather than actually learning from it. Data view gives us a way to take that data and make something actually usable so that at the end of it, we have a database of what we've learned rather than just a replica of a flawed system. If you're wondering how I go from reading a book to having it automatically imported and tagged and queried by data view, check out this video on how I do that with Readwise and how you can do it too. And as always, thank you for watching. Gracias a todos.